Hello and uh, welcome to the channel. Um, in this uh, in this episode, we're going to be discussing this weekend's hurling matches. I'm uh, joined as usual with uh, by Connor McKenna. Um, he's going to give us um, his thoughts on uh, the the games that are coming up this weekend. So we've um, six hurling games. Um, the top of the the top of the card. Um, as on Saturday, we've got All Ireland uh, Senior Hurling Championship quarterfinals. Um, the first one, uh, the first one on papers, it looks like a great game, Galway and Tipperary. Um, how, how do you how do you even start with that one? Like, where do you see that one going? That will be. A <laughs> uh, yeah. I think this weekend we have a, we have five do or die games in the hurling championship between all the tiers. Um, I think that Tip and Galway is going to be a serious game of hurling. I think Galway played really well against Kilkenny in a lot of ways, but they just didn't do enough. You know that kind of way. They kind of let Kilkenny back in the game. They didn't kill them when they went to bed and then a bit of poor goalkeeping got Kilkenny a goal. And I just think that Galway missed so many chances. But if you look at Galway, the likes of Joe Canning and Connor Whelan are savage. They're Di Burke in the full back line is a great hurler and Brian Concannon is hitting form up front. Galway have absolutely excellent talent all around the pitch. Like Daryl McInerney is a great hurler. Well, like, there's no doubt in Galway's talent. I just don't think that like that the way they let Kenny back in the game. That's always been a flaw. They're just not ruthless enough. Galway. I saw them even in the Walsh Cup final back in January, and they let they were hurled Wexford off the park, but they let Wexford back in the game. Wexford snatched it by a pint. And I don't know. I just think Tip. They weren't great against Limerick, but Tip don't really do well in Munster. The rule, like a lot of the time when they won, I think when they stopped the five in a row. Cork hammered them in the first round of Munster and last year Limerick hammered them in a Munster final as well. So I think the Munster final has absolutely or the Munster semi-final even with Limerick at tip has absolutely no relevance to tip's form. I think the fact they had to play a decent core team in the last round, they were flat in the first half tip with a big win, but the conditions were horrendous. They hit loads of wides and everything looked to be going bad for them. But when the game was there in the second half, they grabbed the ball by the horn. They kind of they, they grabbed it by the scruff of the neck and they got the goal then and then I think they were six points up, but Cork got back to with, with, to go one point up. And then Tip, again, they were heading out of the championship against the wind in those conditions. And then they got the goal late on to Jake Morris and they got a, they got a four-point win. And I think that they just, that'll give them a bit of confidence. The same thing happened last year against Leash. Tip were going out of the championship and then they bet Leash. Leash were well in the game and then Leash got a very soft red card. Tip won by about 10 points in the end in Crow Park. But then Tip came back, won a semi, and then they went on to win the final quite comfortably. So I think there's so much potential in this Tip team. I think they have fantastic hurdles all around the park and I just think that it'll be a very close game but I think late on Tip will just about pull away and win by a few points I, I, I do fancy Tip to the end Jerry Okay um, and on the, um, the the other game then which is obviously um, just another also Saturday um, an all monster clash between Waterford and Clare um, so, who who would you regard as the favourites going into that? And you know, who do you think will will come through it? Most definitely, oh, yeah. Jerry. I think they they were okay against Limerick. They played quite well, but Tony Kelly was absolutely fantastic. So he was, and I just think that they had a banana skin against Leash in that in that match in in the in in the qualifiers, and they got over that by a point. And then they were kind of outsiders against Wexford, and they had very good performance again. Tony Kelly was the star of the show, but. I think Waterford are a bit of step up, a step up from those teams. I think Waterford had a great win against Cork. They were brilliant against Limerick last week again. They didn't get the win, but they really showed great spirit. There was a real Waterford. The fight was back. It looks like the Waterford of old, Jerry. You know, playing very hard, industrious workhorses and players and kind of playing free-flowing hurling as well. And I just think that Waterford will be too strong for, for Clare. Clare seem to be having a lot of problems at the moment off the pitch. There's a lot of criticism of, of certain ways that Clare is going and the direction that the county is going. And you now I think Clare are missing too many lads this year with College Collins, Colin Galvin, John Condon and Peter Duggan to be real all early contenders in the hurling, to be honest with you. I think if they had all those lads, they'd be in the top two or three teams. I think they do have talent when everyone's fit. But 
there is still a lot of players that are very, very good in, in the Clare ranks, like Tony Kelly, Shane and Ronald David McInerney, those guys are super hurlers. Like, so I think Clare have potential to win this game, but I think Waterford are slight favourites, and I think Waterford will win this game this week. I think Desi Hutchinson is playing good hurling. Austin Leeson seems to be back near his best, and the Bennets are playing quite well as well. Like, so I just think Waterford might have too much for Clare this weekend, and I think Waterford will win, but it's a bit to spare, actually. I think they'll win by five or six points, and I think that that will set them up. Nicely for a semi-final against Kilkenny. Okay. Um, obviously, um, it, it does it does feel a wee bit like the the Waterford and Clare. It, it feels a wee bit like Waterford are, are a better a better team, whereas you know Clare have got um, Tony Kelly, and it seems like you know like it, whenever you're looking at the scorers, it's the scorers. He, he just seems to be near enough carrying Clare at the minute, you know. So. Um, Obviously, um, Waterford will have to deal with that. But at the same time, you know, if Clare don't give him a bit of support, you know, it, it probably is most likely that Waterford's going to come through. So uh, we'll go on then, uh, the Joe McDonough Cup. Um, we'll start off, obviously, the, the first game is Meath and Westmeath, which is, is pretty much a dead rubber. Um, what, what do you reckon? Is it, what do you reckon is at stake here? Do you think it's just a case of um, local pride? and and uh, is is there a relegation this year? Is there is there an end? No, no. I, to be honest with Jerry, I, I actually think this game should be called off. I don't think there's any reason to play it. Like it, it, it's not going to affect the other matches in the competition at all because it's it's not like that. A win for Westmead it's different in the Westmead and Cardo match. Maybe in the last round where a win might affect potential final placement. But but no, I I see absolutely no reason to play this game, and I I just think it's daft and it's going ahead. To be honest with you, you know. Obviously, like the player to train, but we're in a pandemic, like I just don't think it's the time to be having this game. To be, I think out of all the games, Jerry, this is the one game really that could be called any anywhere. I just don't think there's any logic in having this, to be honest. And it means absolutely nothing. I suppose me have seemed to make a bit of progress, so they might would they'd love to be Westmead. The manager of me, Nick Weir, is actually from Westmead, from Raharney, and a lot of few Raharney guys are actually playing for Westmead, but me would love to be Westmead. Westmead probably have been. They had the upper hand on me. They bet them in 2017, in 2018 twice, and in 2019. But bar one of those four games, three of them, it was two league in 2018, but three of them were actually quite tight, they were. So while Westmead have the upper hand, there has never been much between them. I think Westmead will be a bit downbeat with the first two games. I, I think Jerry Mead might just take them this weekend, but I don't, I, do, I don't see the logic in the game going ahead, to be honest with you. Okay, well, for, from one game that doesn't uh, that, that isn't necessarily going to impact things moving forward, the one that definitely is, um, Kerry versus Carlo, which again is essentially you know a semi final or or uh, whatever so, so be it. But um, how, how do you see that one going? Well, I think that we will definitely have someone down watching that. Well, they won't have someone there, but they'll have someone watching it on the telly for definitely if it's being streamed. And it's a big game for Antrim this year. It is, you know, because Antrim. Could potentially be in a Joe McDonough final on Saturday evening if um, if Carlo beat Kerry. So it's a semi final. This is basically what this is. As you said, if Kerry win this match, they're into the final. If Kerry draw this match, I think if Kerry draw, they they have a chance of getting to the final. It'll be it'll be they'll have five point. Antrim have five, and Carlo will have four. So I say if Kerry draw this match, likely thing is that they won't be in a final. So I think Kerry need to win the match. I'd say Carlo would take a draw. Jerry, a draw would leave Carlo on four points, would carry on five, and it would mean that if Kerry were to beat and um, West Mead team with nothing to play for in the last round, they'd be into into the final. So I think Kerry need to win. Carlo need to get something out of it. Antrim, if Carlo win, it's a Carlo Antrim final. If Kerry win, Kerry have to beat Mead in the last round. Or, or not Kerry, Antrim have to beat Mead in the last round to, to secure the place or get a draw against Mead. So but this game, I think Fanon McAsee got his red card. I don't know. I think there's appeals due. I don't. I didn't hear any outcome of the appeal to be honest. The hearing even uh, uh, from Maxi. If he's missing, it's really a level or jury. It is so. It is like it really gives Carlo a chance of winning this match. Carlo Marty Cavan is a super hurler for 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 Carlo, and he kind of does a lot of scoring for them. And Chris Nolan as well, excellent hurler. So Car- Carlo do have good hurlers, but they haven't really been. It hasn't been a good couple of years. I think the Mead match they got over that by a point. That would really. While they would have might, might have been expected by a bit more, they needed to end their winless run, and that was the game to do. And they got a good run against Antrim too. So Carlo, in their first two games, have done very well. I think that they'll go down to Kerry with every chance of causing upset this weekend. I think Kerry 
are a consistent side, though. Mackesy is a big lot, but Shane Conway is very good. I'm just going to go with Kerry to edge it by a point or two. Okay. Um, so, moving on then to the Christy Ring Cup. Um, the final is Sunday at 4 o'clock. Um, it's between Down and Kildare, I believe. Um, they are both already guaranteed their places in the um, the Joe McDonough Cup next year. Um, so obviously, you know, the, they'll put that down as a as a good season. Um, but there's still there's there's a trophy to be won, and uh, it look it looks on paper it looks like a, a quite a, a well balanced and intriguing game. Certainly, if the um, if the leagues are to go by. Um, down finished a place above um, Kildare in the league, and in the league meeting they played in Castle Wellen, and Down won it by two points. So it, it's definitely um, it's definitely going to be tight. Uh, so how do you how do you see it going? I was actually at it well in over the summer period. It was, it was a hurling stronghold to be honest with you, but it's interesting that 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 played host to that game. But um, I think this is nearly impossible to call, Jerry. I think that. Kildare have won two Chris Deering titles and they've been effed over by the format both times. You know, they haven't really got a, they haven't been promoted, in other words. And down won it in 2013. I think they might have been effed over by the format as well. Like, so at least this time there is a promotion and both sides have got it won. I think down, most of those Kildare players would have won Chris Deering titles before in 2018, especially. So I think probably the down as might want to win it more. I think down the confidence winning against Oxley would give them an unbelievable boost. It's hard to I think this is really impossible to call, Jerry. I think that on paper, you'd probably go with down, but the Kildare side is probably every bit as strong as down as well. But I'm just going to go for down to edge this game, Jerry. I think that might just, the win against Offaly might just give them a bit of bit of belief, you know, and they have, but I suppose one thing, if you look at down, Hurling, now I wouldn't be an expert on them by any means, but the same name seem to be cropping up every year and down, really keeping them going for the last couple of years, but even ages going down, really, it's probably one of those th- games, Jerry, where Down are a tradition of hurling fanatics in the hurling Down. And I wouldn't say they were ever a powerhouse, but they were always, they were some tradition of being a good hurling team Down have, you know. While Kildare, it's the opposite. They never really have much tradition, but they're kind of coming and improving and putting good structures in place to keep to keep improving. And Kildare really are, are improving. Now, I think Down, ironically, are going a bit like Kildare. They're kind of trying to put structures in place to underage, especially in the last, and it's probably only now we're probably seeing the reward of those, those structures in place. So, I'm gonna go it down just to edge it to Kildare. That's a joke, and it's a bit. It's about time they had a chance to get revenge on down for the 2010 All Ireland semi final in the football. I think that did down back them, and I think Benny Coulter they'll argue he was definitely in the square when when he got that goal. So so um so, but I, I just think down might do enough. But I think both sides in the Joe McDonough next year and they're there on merit and they, and they could do well in that competition. Okay. Um. As I said the other day, I promised I was going to do something for this match, and I was I was going to make sure that competi- the competitions got um, you know the respect that that you know they deserve. Um, so wherever you're watching this, if it's Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, whatever, um, there is a video uh, which I done the other I done finished it last night um, down in Kildare. So I, I spent a I spent a, a fair few um, hours over the last couple of days going through teams and. And lineups and stuff so just um a couple of things um sort of the, dan- the danger man so to speak um for um for down um the the, the main man seems to be Oshin mcmanus and um, from leitrim 14 mm-hmm. points in the two games he scored seven points in the win over Derry and the win over offaly um the um the main for called there um is um jack sheridan who in the win against Wicklow he got two five and against Ross Common he got two six, um. But uh, all that's in in the wee video, um. So I shared that there. So if you're watching this, um, the video is out there and there'll be another one for um our next game. Um, still working on it. Still a work in progress. Um, the uh Nicky the Nicky Record Cup um final, which is before also at Port Park, um, which is before the the Down and Kildare game, um, half one, um, going for that one and. Uh, so the final of the Nicky Racker Cup, Donegal versus Mayo. Um, what what do you know what the situation is with the Nicky Racker Cup? Are they both already promoted, or is what is only the winner promoted, or what happens there? No, who the winner? It's actually yeah. hard to get this information about whether who was up or whatever. But it's ironic who it was subplot. Luke White is, I think he's in goals for Donegal, but 
he's actually from Wexford originally, and his joke was that he was walks down and goes past Nicky Rackard's statue every day, and no Wexford man has ever obviously played. They've never been anywhere near that level of the Nicky Rackard, but it would be ironic for a, a Wexford man to... I think Shane Darcy actually from this in played used to play for loud hurlers. He's actually a Wexford man as well. I don't think they actually won the competition though. So it'd be great if a Wexford man could could um could lift his own his own um legends trophy. But there was a joke that Donegal have lads from Armagh playing from Offaly playing from Tipperary and from Tyrone. They've all played for Donegal in, in recent years. But the joke was that they've all had Donegal girlfriends so they these are plants kind of to get them to play for, for the county and hurl and their recruitment recruitment officers. But um but I, I, I think that Donegal, Mayo have been at a higher level than Donegal this year. They were in Division 2A. I think Donegal were in Division 3A and they, they got promoted and Mayo got relegated. So they're at the same level next year, so that shouldn't mean too much. But I think that the experience that Mayo had of playing two levels higher than Donegal this year could be the determining factor. And I think Mayo might just win that game and get back up to Crystal Okay. Okay. Um... As I say, I'm go- I'm I'm in the process of um of having a look through the, the information for for the two teams. Is it, you know as you said, there's not a lot of information out, and it, it it was a struggle um to get some of the information, lineups and stuff. And uh, the um th- thanks to there was a few people you know pointed me in the right direction and helped me out with stuff. Um, so there will be another video for for that game. Um, I post it on this uh, this same channel. Um. Just very briefly, just looking at the um, the the Mayo the main, the main man for Mayo looks to be um, Shane Boland, um, twelve points against Monaghan, um, eight points against Tyrone, and one eleven against Leitrim. Um, so quite a, quite impressive. And um, just a quick look at uh, Donegal. Um, there's Declan Culler was top scorer against Longford with six points. Um, Carmack O'Grady got one two, and Davin Flynn got five points against Armagh, and then in the win against Tyrone, um, Jack O'Loughlin got eleven points, and Jared Gilmore got two three. Um, so there'll be a, there will be a video on that um, as well. Um, so that's uh, something you know for if you're if you're bored and want to watch something. Um, so that's all of the games that we have. Um, this weekend then in the hurling. So uh, my thanks as as always to Connor for his um, all his information, which is always uh, always fantastic. Um, so thanks very much for coming on, and uh, hopefully then we'll be back with the uh, with the um, reviews after some uh, some excellent games. We hope on uh, Monday or so. So uh, thanks again. Thanks for watching. And as I say, you know there's a few videos out there. So um, go on the YouTube and and have a look and and. Uh, See what you think. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll be back again soon.